Hundreds of millions of years ago, during the Precambrian era, a massive geological tear split the Earth's surface, creating the world's longest valley, running from northern Syria down the route of the Jordan and Nile rivers and into East Africa, the Great Rift Valley. A huge body of water called Lake Lisan once filled the Jordan Valley, but over time the Earth's climate changed and Lake Lisan dried up. At the end of the last ice age, the Jordan Valley turned to grassland, bordered by Lake Tiberias and the Dead Sea. At the Rift Valley's lowest point in Jericho, the landscape was fed by a gushing spring of underground water that never dried up, Ain al Sultan. And it was here that early man first moved out of caves and laid the foundation of the world's first city. Ancient Jericho is also the setting of one of the most famous stories in biblical tradition and home to a mystery which sparked one and a half centuries of archaeological detective work. According to the biblical narrative, after their release from Egypt, Joshua's army crossed the Jordan River and attacked Jericho. They marched around its massive walls for seven days, and on the last day, the priests blew their trumpets, the army shouted, and the walls fell. But what has archaeology revealed here? A joint Palestinian-Italian expedition has been excavating at Tel Sultan since 1997. But explorers first came to this small hill in 1868, when the Palestine Exploration Fund commissioned the British captain Charles Warren to dig a series of shafts into the mound in search of the biblical walls of Jericho. Warren's search failed to prove anything. But in 1907, a German team, Selin and Watzinger, returned to the same hill. They dug a wide slice into the tell, which can still be seen today. They also failed to find the biblical walls, but using a more scientific approach, they uncovered something much older, an early Bronze Age city, dating back 5,000 years. In the 1930s, John Garstang uncovered a Canaanite cup bearing an ancient face. And deeper in the tell, a much older Stone Age work of art. Garstang was convinced he had discovered the biblical walls and his findings electrified the public. He drew a sketch of how he imagined them. However, since then, radioactive carbon dating tests have placed these walls to a time much earlier than the biblical era. In 1952, archaeologist Kathleen Kenyon began work that revolutionized both archaeological practices and our understanding of the ancient world. Kenyon employed the technique of meticulously controlled stratigraphic excavation, the careful removal of earth to allow for examination of distinct historic layers, along with radioactive carbon-14 dating, to determine the precise age of her finds. Kenyon mapped 23 separate and distinct layers on Tel Sultan city built upon city over the course of thousands of years, whose accumulating rubble creates the hill that we see today.
Kenyon concluded that the Bible story did not match the archaeological record and should be understood as an oral tradition rather than factual history. However, the most brilliant discovery was something Kenyon hadn't expected. At the base of the hill's 23 layers were the remains of the world's first city. To understand the layout of today's Tello Sultan and how it relates to the cities that once existed here, it's helpful to locate key discoveries. The remains of a 10,000-year-old Neolithic tower, the oldest structure on the Tell. Early Bronze Age city walls and 5,000-year-old buildings, including a palace. And a 4,000-year-old Middle Bronze Age wall and watchtower. But to truly grasp Tell el Sultan's profound impact on human history, we must look back to the early reaches of time. As the last Ice Age came to a close 12,000 years ago, Stone Age humans called Natufians lived in small camps ranging throughout southern Turkey, Palestine, and the Sinai. They made homes in subterranean caves. One group settled in the caves near Ain el Sultan. They domesticated wild animals and harvested plants. And eventually did something revolutionary. By collecting wild seeds, planting them, and tending them, they discovered farming. The result triggered a transformation as profound as any in the history of the human species. By 8000 BC, the Natufians of Ain sultan had moved from living in caves to crafting dome-shaped houses made of sun-dried bricks of red soil mixed with hay and pebbles. Their guaranteed abundant food source fueled a sustained population explosion. The community on the Tell would grow from a small collection of huts to a village of 2,000, the highest concentration of people the world had yet seen. Settling down did make the community more vulnerable, but Jericho responded with a second innovation now regarded as mankind's first great building project. Thousands of years before the first pyramid, the Stone Age community of Jericho gathered a labor force and over the course of years engineered the world's first city wall. This treasure of world heritage can still be seen today its stone tower soared eight meters high, and it contained an interior ladder of 22 steps. By exchanging the constant movement of hunting for a settled way of life, man's relationship to the natural world was transformed Evidence of man's first religious practices, along with man's earliest works of art, have been found buried deep within the Tell. Decorated skulls, plastered, painted, and beautified. Art historians considered these as man's earliest representations of the human form. After a time, Jericho was mysteriously abandoned. When humans returned, 
they developed a new invention, pottery, which revolutionized the ability of humans to store food. By the last phase of Stone Age Jericho, rectangular homes replaced earlier round ones, and the city encompassed the entire area of today's mound. Cloth and yarn were invented at this time, along with sewing, changing the way humans dressed. The development of dairy products appears to have come around this time. Around 3000 BC, the invention of the wheel and writing transformed society. And Jericho was among a number of urbanized city-states whose world was loosely linked by trade. The discovery of copper and later bronze laid the foundation of metal science. The abundance of mass-produced clay jars found packed in storerooms is evidence of Jericho's wealth. However, the thickness of the double mud brick city walls is evidence of a city living under enormous threat of attack. A thick layer of ash, dated to around 2300 BC, and other evidence, indicates a nomadic people overran the Tell and burned it. During the Middle Bronze Age, the Canaanites built a new Jericho atop the ruins of the old city. This people, whose history has been lost to time, created large public buildings, had sophisticated urban planning, and made technological advances. Jericho was a city of rich gardens and date palms, surrounded by massive double walls, whose lands were fed by a sophisticated water network. Its merchants exported grains, olive oil, and wine. Its artisans created elaborate works of art, like this small pot adorned by a woman's face which allows a glimpse of an ancient hairstyle. This history is still being uncovered. Recent excavations have unearthed a Canaanite-era palace, guarded by a watchtower and city wall, and served by a 5,000-year-old open-air kitchen. Elaborate family burial tombs filled with sophisticated furniture, jewelry, pomegranates, and dates became the norm. However, burnt debris, one meter thick, dated to 1550 BC, is witness to Jericho's utter destruction. Jericho was essentially a ghost town for the next 900 years, and it was largely abandoned during the biblical era. In its place, a new Jericho sprouted to the south. During the Roman era, King Herod built a palace there, protected by a fort. Later, during the early Islamic period, a grand winter palace, Khurbet al-Mafshar, or Hisham's palace, was constructed two kilometers north of the city.
Telo Sultan is regarded as one of the great treasures of human heritage, home to both agriculture and urbanization, two of the most remarkable developments in human history. Today, Telo Sultan and Hisham's palace form the first archaeological parks established by the Palestinian National Authority. Over 10,000 years and 23 civilizations later, Jericho is a monument to the civilizations that built and continue to build in this oasis of the Great Rift Valley.